<laughs> All right. Well, we are, have everyone on, I think. We have a full list of attendees. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we'll just jump in and get started. Um, my name is Carrie Petrie, and I'm the Director of Project Management at Data Marketing. And we're really excited for this webinar today. We are focusing on advertising today and tomorrow. Um, obviously, with COVID-19, um, you know, everything has changed, just everything. So I'm really excited to be with these two guys. I'll let you guys introduce yourself. Brian, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, my name is Brian Kennett. Um, I'm the Vice President of Digital Advertising uh, for the Star Tribune Media Company uh, here in Minneapolis. And then I'm Jason Walbeck, uh, Advertising Director at Data. So I work a lot with our team on, you know, all the paid advertising side of digital. Great. Excellent. Well, I think it's great if we can just kind of start at uh, where we are today, if you guys don't mind just sort of giving us a synopsis, what are we seeing going on today? What uh, are the advertising trends that you guys are noticing? Uh, what's the current state of things? Sure, happy to jump into that. Um, well, I think it's, it's constantly changing and evolving. You know, every time that there's a, a press conference from the governor, it seems to, you know, and something else opens or closes, there, there's changes. But what you know, we've been doing a lot of uh, reader research and trying to understand what um, the market is looking for. And I can share some of that as we walk through um, today. But, but essentially what we're seeing is as a publisher on that side of the business, more traffic than we've ever seen. So April was the second largest traffic month ever in the history of Star Tribune, um, followed by the first, which was March, the month before. And when you think about um, big events that have happened um, in Minnesota over the course of the last 15 years, that's remarkable to have two back-to-back -back traffic days. And, um, so, so more inventory than ever, more traffic than ever, uh, more engaged traffic than ever. And this is true across news publishers, um, certainly, and, and video, um, you know, online video type products, Netflix you know, and the like. Um, but we also see um, a lot of reduction in ad spend because people are closed or um, they're just not sure what to say. Uh, so, so it's been kind of a, not kind of, it's been a very unique, uh, mm. unprecedented um, advertising market, um, regardless of whether that's digital or linear type products. Yeah. yeah I think at the, uh, the end of April, the last status, I was like 37%. Um, so over a third of all advertisers had stopped advertising at that point. Uh, and, and at the end of March, I think it was like a, a fourth. So like just goes to speak to, you know, like Brian was saying, you know, a lot of more people are on the platforms. They're spending more time there. So there's more opportunity. Um, and then obviously with less advertisers, there's lower competition. So that's really what we're seeing across, you know, the industry is just uh, a huge drop in the, the CPM or cost per thousand impressions. CPCs have, have dropped down pretty um, significantly depending as well, but what that leads to obviously is, is a lot more opportunity because lower costs, you're going to get a lot more for your advertising dollars, but yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting time for sure. I would, I would caveat it a little bit by saying in the last week, um, after the opening announcement, in, you know, for the, for Minnesota, um, we've seen a dramatic uptick. So yeah. um, on the print side of our business, nearly everyone uh, was back in on Sunday. Um, so we're seeing that on the digital side as well. So we see that that we took, you know, a real, we went off a really steep cliff really fast and it kind of sat there for a while, but we're really starting to see uh, momentum come back across the advertisers. That's great. People are ready to get back out there. Uh, let's focus first on the audience and what people are wanting to see. Brian, you mentioned this reader panel data that you guys have been looking at. Can you talk a little bit about what do people want to see right now? What don't they want to see? What have you guys been learning? Sure, so, so happy to share um, some of that. Um, so again, something that, that's, that's been evolving, you know, it's changed a lot over the course of the last several weeks, but initially, you know, in our, so we have a 4,000 person roughly reader panel across the state of Minnesota that we survey and look for insights, um, how people are feeling about everything from 
content that they're reading in our products to ad ads and whether or not they saw them and how they feel. And we also um, partner with companies like Magid and others in, in the space that do a lot of great research and they align really well. So initially um, in March, when, when things first happened, we heard and saw a lot of people saying the messages need to be um, caring and talk about first responders. And, you know, we all have probably have seen the, the YouTube videos, maybe not of how all the ads start to look exactly the same. And if you haven't seen the YouTube videos, if you've had your television on or been watching Netflix, you've seen them. Yeah. Um, so we had that trend happening. Um, at the end of April, when we resurveyed the group, we heard a pretty strong message. We want to hear about whether or not you're open mm -hmm. because we used to know that the grocery store was open. Right. We used to know that the convenience store was open. That's, we don't know that anymore. So we need to know that. Mm -hmm. um, and then also people are saying, I've taken a financial hit. So I need to know, I need a compelling reason. What's the deal? What's the offer? Uh, what can I expect? Um, there's that piece. And then there's also a growing amount of, of readers, consumers, and this is confirmed a lot in the Magid research as well that are saying, we need to know that it's safe. You yeah. need to tell us what you've done. Are you temperature checking? Are you following safety protocols? We need to know what it is that um, makes us safe. But overwhelmingly, they're saying, we don't need you to tell us about um, how you're so sorry for the times or that, um, you know, honoring the, the responders. Overwhelmingly, people are saying, yeah, 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 we get it. Now tell us what the deal is. Tell us that you're open and tell us um, that it's safe. There's also that line, I think, between getting to the point where it just doesn't sound very genuine anymore, where it just becomes pretty repetitive of a message. Uh, yeah, I agree. I was having a conversation with a, with a local sports team CMO um, this week, and we were talking about how we've seen some brands really stretch mm -hmm. to try to make it seem like, like it's natural for them to be thanking nurses or grocery store workers, okay. um, and it feels like a stretch. And, and conversely, we've seen some really good examples of brands pivoting and really talking about how, you know, we've always been family owned. We've always given beds to the homeless or we've always thanked our workers in the case of Macy's, if you've seen those spots, you know, with the Thanksgiving day parade in the background saying, you know, we've always done this. We're just doing it a little bit earlier and different this year. That's a natural connection, but we've seen a lot of that. Um, yeah. I think all of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that's a very good point. I mean, when you get to, a point in time where people are starting to make memes and and the YouTube videos <laughs> making fun of you know in these unprecedented times mm -hmm. you know we're here for you it, you know it, it's time to obviously pivot and you should be doing something different um, and I think it, it's cool to see I know like Budweiser as they brought back their was up uh, spots that they used to do on TV years ago but now it's you know everybody is staying at home and they're doing a video conference and talking to their friends and doing it that way. So it's cool to see, you know, some cool spins on it too, where they're, they're bringing more fun to it. Um, and I know Ryan Reynolds, there was a, a poem that he did for um, a new phone company or something that he was doing, but like called out, we had this really great plan to do this, this commercial, but then, you know, what happened and kind of pivoted and they just did a more simple thing with it. So there's definitely opportunity too. I, I would say to have, uh, you know, fun with it in the right situations and scenarios. So something to think about as well. We all could use a good chuckle, I think, right now. <laughs> it definitely doesn't hurt. <laughs> Um, so let's talk a little bit. I know a lot of the people who have joined us today are um, business owners or are in marketing positions in their businesses and they're trying to decide, okay, what do I do? What is my next step? What's smart? Um, what sort of advice do you guys have with maybe specifically for businesses that maybe pulled back in the last couple of months and now they're trying to get back in? Um, what are some things that they should be thinking about considering what are good tactics? Yeah, the first thing that, that I would say to anyone in that position is even if you're not ready to spend yet, even if you're not sure uh, what that means, you cannot wait to plan. Um, you can build a, a reopening plan, a marketing plan, and say on, you know, T minus one or T minus one week, you know, before we open, this is what we need to start doing, talking about the um, precautions that we're taking and, and work your way up to to that day. And that doesn't mean that you have to put dates there. I get it. Like sometimes we don't know that 
Um, maybe some of us don't trust fully that the next date is real yet. I, I hear that. I get it. But you, you're not going to be um, in a good spot to wait and to try to do that last minute. You're going to have a lot of other things on your plate, like figuring out uh, what types of PPE you need to have in the business. So there's plenty of other things that you're going to want to be doing last minute. The other thing, and I can't stress this enough, awareness marketing, while it kind of it's gotten a bad rap over the last you know, five or six years as people have really migrated to things like paid search where they can measure and see this immediate result. Um, awareness advertising today is more critical than it's ever been. Again, nobody knows that you're open. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, my daughter, who's back home from college now because of the, the situation, yeah. drove up to a local Starbucks and came home and said, the Starbucks is closed. I, I, they Apparently, they've got modified hours. I wouldn't know that. I would assume that they're open. So it doesn't matter. Starbucks has plenty of brand awareness. They don't normally need to do marketing to say there's a Starbucks here. All of a sudden, you do. It doesn't matter what business you're in. You need to tell people, you need to do the basics, that top of funnel, um, here's where we're located, here are our hours, here's what we stand for. Um, and that can start now. In fact, it should start now. Um, yeah. And then the other piece of that, and then I'll flip it, sorry, I'm talking too much, is um, with this being trapped in the household, with this stay at home, you know, as Jason said, we're all spending more time um, and the inventory is cheaper. Uh, we're all spending more time. So if your competitors are there building brand awareness and, and starting to get people thinking about their products and services and, you've, and you're not because you've pulled it all back, um, when, I have, when I don't have to stay home and when I can go out shopping and I don't have to sit in front of my computer or my TV researching, I'm not gonna seek you out. I've got the other brand in my head. So it's important that as you can, um, you know, as circumstances allow that you start doing that awareness uh, work now. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I was just going to say, I can contest to the, the Starbucks example as well. That <laughs> happened to me. I drove up to one that I figured would be open. You get there, it's not. It's like, okay. What am I going to do? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These unprecedented times. <laughs> In my caffeine. Yeah. Um, well, if Jason, going to that awareness key, maybe you can talk a little bit about this too, what we're seeing from Google and Facebook with these awareness campaigns and costs. Yeah, um, you know, really kind of the trend that, that we've been seeing, um, you know, it's across the industry and it, we're kind of right in line with what we've been running with a lot of our clients too. But on the Facebook end, you know, newsfeed, running ads in the newsfeed and stories, uh, CPMs, we're down, you know, between like 25 to 30 percent. Um, Google was down, you know, in the 30 percent as well. So what you know we're seeing across the board um you know we've on our last april reporting that we just have been going through with a lot of our clients is just the number of impressions and the number of clicks have just skyrocketed um for the amounts that they've been spending uh and you know to brian's point earlier too uh, you know the, the trend has been I, I think it kind of peaked down at the bottom in april and it's definitely has been starting to go back up here um but that's why right now you know it is if, if you can start planning and you have the, the means to start doing some awareness advertising, why it still is a good time to do so because costs, they are going up. Um, so kind of get in there while they're, you know, still on the lower end. Uh, it's just going to allow you to reach, you know, get your ad out there way more times and, and potentially get a lot more traffic to your site or, or whatever your goal is there. But yeah, we've, um, and I mean, like I said, it, it's really been across the board. The, the thing that we are seeing too more on the conversion side is for a lot of clients that's still lower. So people are seeing your ads more, they're clicking more uh, potentially, but they're not in that mindset to necessarily, uh, you know, call or fill out a form or, or make that purchase, whatever it is at this point. So that's something to keep in mind too. Um, but if, if you are coming up with a good plan at this point and, and taking the time to create a good advertising strategy, um, you know, that's something you can take into to consideration and, and put into place so you can see down the road, um, you know, focus on the awareness now and then down the road when you're ready, you can try to switch it a little bit more um, when things start to turn a little bit more normal and people are out and, and converting a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would add 
that that doesn't mean that you won't get immediate results today. I mean, oh, yeah. our, our our conversion rates for auto um, in the last couple of weeks have been as high as they've ever been. Um, we for furniture they've been nearly as high as they've ever been. Um, we ran a, a campaign way back at right at the beginning, at the end of March, for a, a um, uh, how can I say it, a, a luxury or a high end uh, paint single location type um, or standalone type paint retailer and. It was wildly successful, four or five times normal conversion rates, and they had they actually had to change messaging uh, mm -hmm. during the campaign because they were so busy uh, for wow. curb, promoting curbside pickup, talking about ways you can sell, uh, do what you need to do. So depending on your industry, um, if you're open, it is a good time. And a lot of people, I think, had a fear initially of, oh, no, I don't know that I want to advertise where there could be stories of, of this COVID you know, negative type piece. And the, the most recent work out of the, um, I, th I think MAGID and the IAB study both said, one said 93 and one said 95% of consumers say they would not feel um, um, a negative sentiment towards a brand because they're advertising next to COVID. It's something that's all around us. It doesn't affect the way they perceive a brand at all. They still need to know if you're open and what the deal is. Yeah. Well, in those <laughs> industries you mentioned too, with the auto and then with furniture i have to imagine you know there's some great deals out there right now and then the other one with uh paint i mean we're all sitting in our houses looking at oh i gotta finish that project i gotta <laughs> finish that so i think from an industry perspective it's really understanding where the consumer is right now for sure yeah we've definitely seen that with the auto dealer that we work with as well um they actually saw conversions go up um, on the social side, so Facebook advertising specifically uh, in April, which is nice. And, um, you know, I know I'm just reading something earlier about just search traffic has been up pretty significantly um, actually on the automotive side. So people are doing more research uh, a lot on like the, the, the buy or lease side of things it was talking about, like, and they're ready to do that now. So um, they're looking for deals. They're just doing it a little bit differently. And I know we've, we rolled out with our client to digital retailing. So uh, people can now go online, purchase the, the vehicle um, and do everything right then and there. So they don't even, wouldn't even have to technically step foot in the, um, in the auto dealership itself. So a lot of cool things, you know, happening in that industry. And then we do have a, um, some of the people call it a, uh, a toy category, but the uh, client who sells recreational vehicles, mm -hmm. golf carts, um, and Carrie can speak more to this too. She works directly with that client, but uh, you know, they, their results last month were just the best that they've had. I don't know, in, in years for sure. In the last two that's years. My kind of social yeah. distancing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that was kind of what they were seeing is that people, you know, they're having canceled vacations, they're having to stay close to home. So people are buying these toys to play around with. Um, so it was, it was a great month for them. So plus, I think the, the stimulus checks, I think for some people gave them a little extra cash to on top of financing deals. So it's just a perfect storm, I think, for that industry. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we've we've um, seen it across categories, travel, even yeah. travel, like, you know, I, I've had a lot of travel clients say, well, it doesn't make sense for me because nobody can travel right now. And I don't know about, about y'all, but I've been planning after sitting in that house and working in that <laughs> house and having my kids in that house, I've been planning more of what, you know, what I want to do around Minnesota as soon as I can than ever before. And I might not make the reservation yet because I don't know what the date is, kind of like that marketing plan. It might be like T you know, T plus three weeks, I am going to go here. So um, you want to make sure that you're in that consideration set. Uh, Some of us had our, to cancel our vacation to Aruba and we're really excited to reschedule it. Mm, that might yeah. just be something that I'm thinking about constantly, but. <laughs> I'm actually supposed to leave in two days to go to South Carolina for a week. And no. oh, not happening now. Not happening. Yep. I'll just cry later over our canceled vacations. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. One thing I want to go back to that, um, Jason, you kind of touched on too, but just how consumer behavior really has changed a lot. And what do you guys think going forward? How much of that is going to stick? Like the curbside pickups, the digital retailing, all this stuff. I mean, is this something that, that you guys anticipate is going to be around for 
the foreseeable future. Do you mind if I share my screen? I've, we've actually done a ton of research directly oh, yeah. on that. So I will, um, I will pull up um, some slides. And show yeah, that would be awesome. A I lot of it uh, we do that. see. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to. Is it letting you? Oh, God, now I have to know how to use technology, Jason. No, nope, I think it's going to let me. OK, good. <laughs> Just have your okay. kids come down. I'm sure they can help. Yeah. <laughs> I actually went into the office today, go. which I know I probably shouldn't do, but um, I did. So can you see my screen? Yes. So, you know, this is some of the work around what, where people will expect to look for that information um, about um, what you've done. And overwhelmingly, while clearly on the door, if, you know, if you haven't got it, if you haven't put it on your website yet, or um, you haven't thought about it, you should be. But um, I was going to get here to where, how you see that it's, it's going to change. Um, and interestingly, um, people are saying that for at least the foreseeable future, um, they are much more likely uh, to sell, prefer to shop um, in situations where there's less contact. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're still overwhelmingly saying, even once you're open, I want those curbside pickup options. When Once the door's open to your business, I still want to be able to shop online and pick it up. Um, mm -hmm. And that's likely going to continue um, for quite a while. Um, yeah. But I, I also think it's interesting to point out that um, even though there's people have taken a huge financial hit, um, overwhelmingly the, the folks surveyed both in the MAGID work and in our reader panel work are saying they're persuadable. So they're either going to still make the purchase or with the right pricing, with the right um, interest rate offers, those types of things, they are still likely to continue to make that purchase. Um, and then in their messaging, when it comes to advertising, um, rather than hearing about um, thanking the first responders, they overwhelmingly want to know what the sale is um, and what the deal is. So when you look, you know, the numbers, it's, it's pretty telling. I mean, 25% of people still want to, you know, hear tributes, which is still significant, but look at those top numbers, you know, 87% want to know about special offers and 66% about store safety. So that's yeah. really where those messages should be focused. So what we're seeing from that data is people are ready to get back to normal, but they're very cautious. They expect uh, when they return that they're going to return to stores, but they're still going to want those alternative options. Um, mm -hmm. They're concerned about spending, but they're very persuadable. Um, and they want to know about special offers. So I think it's, it's kind of almost back to business as usual with a twist. People yeah. have always wanted to know about special offers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's kind yeah. of fascinating. I think, you know, I'm in the process of selling my house as well. Um, and we talked, you know, met with a realtor like right as COVID was starting to break out and all of that was happening. So we were kind of concerned like, okay, we should, you know, get our house listed what's going to happen with home prices? Are they going to go down? But really, you know, that market has stayed incredibly steady because people are still purchasing. There's, I mean, there's lower inventory now, but it just goes to show like that's not stopping people from making those purchases and um, still, you know, investing in bigger, obviously larger purchases such as that. So it's been an interesting kind of experience there too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I do want to note to, everybody, to our participants that if you have questions, please feel free to, to send Thanks. them in and we're more than happy to get to those. So just wanted to note that. Um, great. Another thing that we kind of have touched on too is about communicating what you're doing to stay safe and what you're doing to, you know, if I'm a consumer and I'm going to come to your store, what are you going to do to make sure that I'm safe? What are your guys' tips on that? How, what's the best way for people to communicate those things? Website is a great option. Um, I know that was one of the first things that, you know, when, when the stay-at-home order went in place um, across, you know, all the clients that we were working with, our creative team was super busy just going and updating websites and getting, you know, the COVID um, messaging on there. Here's what we're doing. Here's what's going on. Um, so, making sure that that's up to date too. And then especially now that things are starting to open up again, it's, it's reevaluating that, making sure you're updating that messaging to match what the current standards are too, um, is super important because uh, people are obviously 
going to be going there and looking for that information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was just going to pull up some more of the stats of what people are saying, you know, in, in the work that, that they think is most important, but 93% um, of people surveyed said they will be checking your website to see that you've done the work. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not just a few, it's, it's a lot. Um, they, you know, overwhelmingly, they, they, they talked about things like um, about understanding whether or not your um, employee safety or your, that you're checking health of employees. Are you allowing them to come to work sick? Are you doing temperature checks? Mm -hmm. um, are, they, are your employees wearing masks um, are, and practicing social distancing? Um, people want to know. Um, and it looks like from what we're seeing in the way that the surveys have progressed that probably we don't have to do that for super long. I think once people understand um, that, you're, that you're taking it seriously and you're doing the work, you can probably get back to a little bit more of business as usual. But initially, before someone walks in the door, especially in categories like uh, restaurants and hotels, where the data gets really specific, it's overwhelming. People are saying, I will not step back in until I know you've done the work, until I know that I'm safe. And it's not just like a 50% of the population, it's in the 80s and 90s, depending on the question. So I think you need to tell the story, you need to be specific. Um, you can't just say, we're practicing all best practices. You know, you need to say, we're deep cleaning, we're instituting new um, rules about who can be at work. It needs to be um, specific. Yeah. Well, and as we were talking earlier about putting together your marketing plan, um, it's also a great time to put in some of those hours into your website, making sure that it's up to date. Um, and I don't, I don't know, Jason, if you mentioned Google My Business also added something where you can do a COVID update right on your listing so people can easily see here's what we're doing. That's a, that's a great way that when people are searching for you on Google, they can see it right away. So, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at anywhere that that your business is listed, trying to update that to as, be as accurate as possible is going to be important to you if people are looking there. Mm -hmm. um, I see we have a question from Leah. Uh, she asks, for a business that hasn't done too much digital uh, besides Facebook, what would you recommend as a first step or how to get started? So we're talking about all of these great opportunities out there. Uh, if you're used to just posting on Facebook and are looking for new opportunities, what do you think is a great uh, channels to be looking at? Yeah, well, it really depends on the type of business and, you know, whether you're, you know, what your service business or your retail business. So, so some of that will vary, but I would say that um, good blocking and tackling again, you know, we always like to talk about um, you know, this marketing funnel and um, normally with a, where you're new to this, um, I would probably have you focus more at the bottom, you know, which would be paid search or um, some of those types of tactics that are pretty similar and easy to execute um, to, to what it sounds like you might have already been doing. However, this is a weird time. Um, and I think that probably if you're not Starbucks or Target or, and even, I mean, even them, I don't know if they're open, right? So yeah. you're probably going to need to do some awareness to tell people um, what you've done, um, and you're gonna to need to push that to them. There's a lot of different ways to do that. We partner with data uh, on some really specific um, display type products um, and, and ways that that can work, but, but there are lots of ways that, that digital tactics, depending on what you're trying to, to sell or promote, uh, can be used in a really targeted, almost laser focused way to make sure that you're putting that message in front of the people who are most likely to need it. Um, so that's where I would start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I, I would say, yeah, all of that is, is completely true. And I mean, if you're on Facebook already posting, you know, that would be a good, good place to start maybe just with some Facebook ads, um, you know, running an awareness campaign there. Um, or, you know, even if you're not boosting any of your Facebook posts, kind of starting with that too, just to get some more uh, awareness that way. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, like Brian said, it's really going to depend on what, you know, industry you're in and what your goals are, but, um, cause it can vary. There's so many different options, but, um, looking at what, what you're, what you're trying to do and, and starting with something small or simple like that. Brian, did you say blocking and tackling? Yes. Sorry. A bad sports. We don't have any sports, so I've got to like go back to the little bit that I get. So <laughs> work with me. I liked it. No, I was like, 
was funny. Uh, great. Well, we have another question from Tyler. Um, he wants to know how COVID's affected organic traffic. So yeah. what are we seeing just organically? Well, I can speak to the publisher side probably more than I can to individual advertiser sites. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've read a ton of data, but you, you know, Jason might have a closer view to that. But on, as it relates to us as a publisher, um, again, you know, two of the best traffic months we've ever had. We don't pay for traffic, so it's, yeah. it's pretty much all by definition organic, um, but it's up you know, on, on local stories. So I'm gonna put this in a little bit of context because yeah. if I tell you that we're up 40%, you have to remember that there's no sports and sports drives a huge percentage of our traffic. There's yeah. not as much local business coverage and that drives a huge percentage of our traffic. So when we talk about this local non-sports type traffic, there's been an awful lot of periods, Tyler, where it's been up in the in the three to four hundred percent range um, compared to normal. So overall, all in though, you know, we're up forty percent, and it and I think more telling, it's it's almost all Minnesota traffic. Um, it's it's very engaged. It's sticky. Um, they're coming back more and more, and we're a subscription business. You know, our our core, what what pays the bills and keeps our two hundred and forty journalists on the street is largely um, subscription traffic and we've had record subscription growth so we're growing faster than in fact i've been waiting for the announcement to be able to say it but i believe about 25 or 30 minutes ago we, we actually crossed a hundred thousand paid digital subscribers which um is way ahead of plans for us which means that our audience is growing way faster than um we yeah. ever thought that it would and organic traffic is what's driving that yeah, that's uh, in line with New York Times, I saw just had a huge subscriber numbers too, so. Yeah, and on, we see that on the businesses that we do support that we're looking at, their web yeah. traffic, depending on industry, we see a big, you know, we see lift. If they're closed, not as much. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, just with people being home and having more time to research, time to research, um, just, search traffic has, has gone up on Google kind of across the board. So that has led to definitely um, more people visiting more sites and, and that additional traffic, depending on, on, you know, your industry, we do have some clients where they have seen a, a decrease. Um, for example, we have a wedding and event center um, and they saw a pretty, pretty big drop just because, well, they can't host weddings or events right now. Um, so you might see that, but yeah, as a whole, people are spending more time um, researching and, and doing Google searches and that type of thing, which is leading to that increase, what we're seeing on our end as well on the organic traffic. Mm -hmm. Sure, that makes sense. Um, so now looking towards the future of, you know, we've talked about now's the time for awareness campaigns, now's the time to, uh, you know, let people know you're even open or what your hours are. Um, what are you guys seeing even in the longer term? What should people be expecting? Or how long are these great uh, numbers, these great returns going to go on? Um, what, do you, what do you think we're going to see over the next few months? Well, I wish I had a good crystal ball, but I've been warning people not to count on it for long. And it has more to do with the weather than COVID. So we know that okay. normally, um, in a normal situation, web traffic takes a hit, takes a dip you know, as people get out and start spending more time in the sun and doing things. I don't know what it will mean when we have less structured activities and things happening and people will still be working from home. So I don't know what that impact will be, but I would say don't assume that um, that inventory level will stay as high. So it probably makes sense to try to secure and lock in inventory while it's at its low, again, if you can. Um, because probably it, it doesn't um, continue to go down. We're already seeing um, while our traffic still is high, it's still way higher than it would, you know, than it normally would be. Um, we're seeing that it has less of an impact over forecast just in the last week or two than it did before, with the exception of the days that the governor makes big announcements. So I think that people will um, likely, you know, if the crystal ball isn't too fingerprinted up. That's, I that's thought you I brought was. your crystal ball to this. I'm sorry. I wish. Yeah, I left it at home. I came, see, this is what happens when I go to the office. Yeah, that would have been, yeah, that would have been really impressive if you just pulled one out. And, pulled it out. <laughs> I yeah. wish I did. 
Yeah, I, I think that's pretty spot on. I mean, as, as things start to open up, people have more options and um, on things that they can do. And, and once it's obviously when it's nicer out, people are going to be spending more time outside and all of that. Others are going to be spending less time online. So that, that inventory is going to go down and, you know, the costs are going to go back up. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think just starting at least to plan at this point, as, as Brian said earlier, um, and then as soon as, you know, it works for your organization to start running something, I, I would recommend doing that for sure. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Jody. She said, um, she's asking Brian if you had a, any information just about what safety steps customers want to see from restaurants when they start dining out again. Absolutely. I'll pull it up. And then um, while uh, I, I'm also happy, um, I can send some of this uh, through Carrie so that so that you can, those of you on the call can have access to some of that as well. That'd be great. Um, we certainly are not in the business of hoarding information here at the Star Tribune. <laughs> we actually believe that it's a job to provide it to Minnesota, whether it's, you know, on the news side or the advertising side. So we will share as much as That'd be great. Uh, as we as we can for sure. And I'll, I'm pulling it up as we speak. So perfect. Um, no, I think that this kind of the um, the the big unknown is with the restaurant industry, the hospitality industry as a whole, and and what that's all going to look like. So. Yeah. Okay, it's opening up, so I will share it here in just a second. Um, but I would say none of it's going to none of it's really going to shock you. It's sure. it's a lot of the same stuff that um, that you would probably expect to see um, for restaurants. But it is you're not an airline. You are not a hotel. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Share screen. So this is actually um, MAGID work that um, really does, I think, the best job at really drilling in by industry. So you can kind of get a sense, you know, people are saying that these are the things they're worried about um, and everything from shared restrooms to use of shared glassware, um, trusting whether or not staff will stay home when they're sick. Um, and they're going to base their actions on that. So um, those are really the, the key, you know, non-contact delivery. We've seen a lot of this in the, in the large scale um, advertising, you know, from, from large major national brands. But mm -hmm. these are really the pieces that um, I think are probably going to be the most important. And then they're going to, you know, these are types of things that they're looking for to see people doing, automatically opening doors, um, mm -hmm. visible hand washing sta uh, stations so that people understand that they're taking it seriously. Um, employee temperature checks, options to pay without contact. So you know, it was a big movement towards, do you have a mobile payment option so I don't have to hand you yeah. know, my credit card and have you take it away with people that um, you don't know. Um, so again, nothing probably really shocking here. It's about cleanliness and sanitation and hygiene and um, knowing that you've taken the actions to do that. So yeah. hopefully that's, that's helpful. Again, we can, um, we can share more of more of it through um, uh, through the team at Data. Yeah, absolutely. That would be great. Yeah, because I'm thinking, you know, if you're forming um, your statement on your website, telling people what uh, what you're doing, that would be a great resource just to kind of hit that list of those things would be great. So thank you for sharing. Of course. Very good. Okay, well, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the digital space, but let's also talk about traditional uh, advertising and, and if we expect to see any changes there or um, what is still going to be important and relevant with traditional advertising. Um, what are you seeing? Do you, is there going to be a change there or a difference between that and the digital? I, I mean, we're seeing print come back pretty fast. So mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that there will be on the print side, you know, I, and broadcast, um, I can't speak for as well because I, I'm just not as close to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to that on a day-to-day -day basis, but overwhelmingly um, we're seeing, we're seeing our print products come back um, and come back pretty fast. Yeah. So, I mean, our, our 
insert business last Sunday looked almost like it did prior. So wow. definitely a lot of um, return to normal, I guess, um, there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would see that too. Um, I, I'm also not super close with you know, the audio side um, and radio, but I think, you know, when, when there are more uncertainties, uh, people were more likely to maybe cut back on the printing side or billboards because it's not as easy to change as something you're running on digital necessarily. So they might've continued to run something there where you can easily swap the messaging. But now that things are starting to open up, people are feeling uh, more comfortable and have a, a better direction of, of where things are going. I feel like that, that confidence is definitely coming back. Um, and obviously Brian is seeing that on their side with the print. Uh, but I, I would see it definitely continuing to, to increase here over the next few months for sure. I was looking for the stat really quick. In a normal week um, in our full product on the print side, I'm not as close to that. I, you know, I, I sit next to, to Jason who moves that business. But um, in a normal week um, in the insert ad pack, we would have 31 to 35 or so inserts. We had 27 last Sunday. So all the big players were back. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that that's recovering well. Um, you know, I, again, I think that what, one thing that I have seen a lot of chatter around in the industry is that people have gotten really accustomed and comfortable using digital platforms. So um, if you look at the, the difference in viewership of linear, like traditional television, um, during the pandemic, it has not been meaningful. They've stayed pretty flat with their normal times have dropped to almost nothing, um, largely because people are waking up later and they don't have the morning commute and some of those things. But yeah. on the on the um, over the top, um, you know, connected TV app based pieces, that usage is through the roof and people um, seem to be getting more comfortable. I mean, how many of you have a senior, an older friend or relative that have been doing Zoom meetings or Zoom happy hours or family Zoom calls? I never would have thought that. I mean, I have a 99 year old grandpa that FaceTimes me now. So I, <laughs> I, I think that people are getting more comfortable and that lends itself like you know to the likelihood that that people will be using digital platforms more often yeah afterwards yeah that's that's one really interesting and and kind of cool thing about everything that is going on is that it has forced more of that to happen um and it is absolutely going to shift into the future how how people are obviously using digital so yeah a lot more opportunities there than than there were before I just always think of like a few months ago, if you would do a video conference, like people were kind of hesitant about showing their faces. And now it's like, you know, I, I dress nicely for you guys today, but usually, you know, I might have my hair in a ponytail and have my plaid on and I'm like, here I am today. <laughs> We've all gotten a little bit more comfortable of, of being on camera, I think, so. Yeah, my shirts usually don't have buttons anymore. <laughs> I think I still have some. I'm <laughs> someday I will, I'll wear something besides leggings but I don't know when that'll be someday <laughs> well great I mean what else do we did we not touch on that you guys wanted to talk about is there anything that we're missing here in this conversation I would I would just say you know we we partner with data you know on on several solutions really with the goal of being able to make sure that all of data's um, clients have have available to you all of the tools that, um, you know, of any advertiser that we call on directly. So, um, if there's X, if whether it's research or um, highly targeted digital tools, you know, one of the things about being a large publisher, you know, it's great that we have a lot of traffic and that people subscribe. But really, right now, the biggest thing is that we have t over 12 million you know, unique visitors a month. So we're touching 650,000 or so odd people a day across our digital platforms. And we learn how they like to consume content and how, um, are, do they use mobile? Do they use, you know, desktop? How, what time of day? What, what works for them? What doesn't? And all of that can be used to target advertising in a really um, unique um, and efficient way. And when budgets get reduced, which let's be honest, all of our budgets are going to be reduced, whether it's your marketing budget or your personal budget, because this has been a hit to people financially. Mm -hmm. You have to be smart, um, smarter than ever before about how you spend those dollars. So um, we have the ability, you know, data has the ability to leverage us where it makes sense for you um, to do.
do that as well. So if there's anything we can do to help, we're always um, happy to. Um, Data is a good partner. Great. That's a great point. I mean, having having the ability to to just see those trends and and get that data and, and the research side of things is is super beneficial at this time. And then obviously, you know as you are, are running things right now too, the tracking side and, and anal analytics is gonna be really important and just seeing what's happening. Um, and as you are running things, obviously as, as things are changing and shifting, uh, it's gonna be important to keep a, an eye on that too. And so don't just implement one strategy and, and let it run here. Um, it's gonna be more important than ever just to kind of check in periodically and, and see what's working, what's not working, um, and shift your messaging or, or imagery or whatever, just based on what the times are, are calling for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going off of what you just said, Jason, we have a question here about um, how has attribution changed in the recent months, if at all, <laughs> um, measuring the ROI, how's that changed? Oh man, don't get me started. <laughs> um, this, I could talk about this one for another whole hour, um, whoever this person is, but a couple of things. Um, we generally at the um, on the Star Tribune media side, we generally love when we can to, to look at actual in-store traffic as a, as a uh, measure of attribution. So, you know, we love to be able to say this this person saw an ad, this person went in the store. Uh, that helps us to help you understand um, attribution. Obviously, people are locked down, so they're not going into stores, which takes that off the table, makes it a unique challenge. Anytime that the purchase. Um, maybe before it would have been a shorter cycle. Now it's it maybe longer because people have to research, but they can't go buy it. So I don't know that it takes it away completely. I really it better not because man, we need to do that. Um, but I think we need, we might need to look at longer purchase cycles, um, longer path to purchase as we look to understanding what that attribution is. And we need to understand that people are, I know my own behavior. I mean, I sit on a Home Depot website for hours sometimes look, following like goofy rabbit, you know, trails, trying to figure out what I'm going to do in my backyard or something. And right. I'm going to do it. It doesn't mean I'm going to do it tomorrow. Right. So right. Um, we're going to have to get used to longer paths to purchase and um, get comfortable with that for a little while, at least while this is happening. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think it takes it away. It just means that we need to think about it a little probably like we should anyway, honestly. Um, probably just ground us back a little bit more in the fact that not everyone has ADD. Okay, some of us do. It makes a decision instantly. Some people do research and take longer. We're forcing everyone to do that now, so we're gonna have to adjust our attribution models to fit that reality. Yeah, no, well said. I think that's a great point, and people definitely are spending way more time doing that research and then going through that process, so. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, we have another uh, question. Since conversions are down and people are looking to reduce their short-term cash spend, is it more essential than ever for businesses to offer payment plans? That's a great, we're actually doing a reader panel specifically around, we do webinars every, every two weeks or so. Um, and one of the things that came up on our last webinar was, um, have we asked people about how they, like, payment questions. And, you know, we got at it a little bit with the one around, uh, do I need an alternative way to pay? But we haven't really dug deep in our own research on that. But interestingly, if you think back to what those statistics were on what people say is important in messaging, financing and offers um, came up in all of the answers as number two or number three. So clearly it does, uh, and it is critically important. Um, we're, we're gonna dive deeper and whoever asked that question, if there's specific things that you think would be helpful for us, please get those to Carrie or Jason. We're still in the process of formulating that. Um, I know that um, there's a couple of folks that both in financial services where we do quite a bit of work as well as um, other spaces where we've gotten some input, but I'd love some more input around what would, what, what would be a good thing to know that we might not know. Perfect. Yeah, and I think, um, in the article I was reading earlier about the automotive industry, it was something like 80 plus percent. There's an 80 plus percent increase in people using the word affordable when they're searching. So it is, it is a big thing. Um, it is very top of mind. So I think if you can offer those types of things, it's just going to set your business apart from, you know, any competitors who maybe aren't offering that too. So it is a good time to look into that for sure. 
Very good. Any other final thoughts? I think we got to all of the questions. We have a few more minutes if anybody wants to submit any others, but uh, any other final thoughts from the two of you? No, I just, I would just say, you know, thanks for the opportunity. If there's ever um, anything that we can do to help, again, you know, our, our mission at the Star Tribune is more of what matters to Minnesota all day, every day. And we do that in, in different markets in different ways through partners like data, through our own direct teams, um, and everything that we do is really about um, supporting that critical work of 240 or so odd career journalists, more than anyone in the Midwest, uh, to make sure that we're um, keeping people accountable and doing what we need to do. So um, if we can help in any way, we'd love to uh, reach out to data. They are perfectly able to help uh, make those connections happen. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Well, thank you guys so much. It was such a pleasure. This was a great conversation. Thank you for everyone who attended. Um, our next Data U webinar is going to be on planning digital first sales cycles. So that I'm not the expert on that, but we'll <laughs> have much better prepared people to talk about that. But thank you, everyone. Um, this has been great. We will follow up with a recording of today's session, as well as those resources we talked about. So thank you, Brian. Thank you, Jason. This was great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.